Financial instruments that use support from the European Structural and Investment Funds can be a sustainable and efficient way to invest in growth and development in your region or country. They may complement grants and stimulate additional private or public investments. In this way, they help to achieve the policy objectives of your region or country. If you're thinking about using financial instruments, the best way to get started is to map out which actions to take and to structure them step by step. Conceptualizing and planning the steps in advance will make the setup and management process of your financial instrument easier. We call this an action plan and in this video we will show you which elements it includes. So what are the most important elements that you should consider? We've divided the overall life cycle of financial instruments into four phases. Design, setup, implementation and winding up. In this video, we will guide you through these four phases. A well-executed design phase will help you choose the right financial instrument and the best management structure to go with it. A first step in this design process is to understand that financial instruments can support certain investment priorities within your programme. They can be used where the activities are financially viable, for instance, generate income or revenue, or savings on future expenditure, so that final recipients are able to reimburse the loan. The second step is an ex-ante assessment, which analyzes the market and proposes the scope of the financial instrument and how it should be delivered. A detailed guide and separate video on how to do this is available on our Fire Compass website. Some of the concrete actions to be taken next will depend on the results of the ex-ante assessment and your choices. For instance, you may entrust the implementation of the financial instrument to financial intermediaries, such as a bank or an equity fund manager. These financial intermediaries can be useful to help managing authorities deliver support to final recipients. You may also decide to set up a fund of funds as an umbrella instrument that uses several specific funds. For instance, a fund of funds for small and medium-sized enterprises with specific funds for loans, guarantees and equity investments. An important step here will be to select the financial intermediaries or the manager of the fund of funds, as this also includes the potential to provide or attract additional investment. Please note that if your financial instrument is implemented by a fund of funds, its manager will select the financial intermediaries. Bear in mind that these implementation options are not exhaustive and that the selection must be carried out in line with applicable laws, in particular, the law on public procurement. In the next step, funding agreements will need to be drafted. They can be concluded, one, between the managing authority and the body implementing the fund of funds, and subsequently between the body implementing the fund of funds and the financial intermediaries, or two, between the managing authority and the financial intermediaries if there is no fund of funds involved. The funding agreements must include all elements provided in Annex 4 to the Common Provisions Regulation. For example, an investment strategy which details how the financial instrument should be implemented, the financial products offered, the target groups and possible combination with grants, a business plan which also explains the expected leverage effect, the target results to be achieved by the financial instrument, provisions concerning monitoring, reporting, calculating and paying management costs and fees, or winding up of the financial instrument. In addition, further legal provisions may be helpful or even necessary, such as the specification of the applicable law or mechanisms to deal with possible disputes. The next phase is the setup of the financial instruments. 
In this phase, the bodies implementing the financial instrument will make sure that a system is put in place to deliver the financial instrument as requested by the managing authority and set out in the funding agreement. This concerns the governance structure, which could, for example, involve a steering committee made up of members from the managing authority, the fund manager and other relevant parties in the implementation of the financial instrument. The next step will be to open a separate account for the financial instrument to ensure proper accounting and an audit trail from the very beginning. Once the account is in place, the first payment can be made to the financial instrument. For example, 25% of the total programme contribution committed to this financial instrument in the funding agreement. Following this, the first application for interim payments, including expenditure for the financial instrument of a maximum of 25% of the committed programme contribution, can be submitted to the European Commission. The Commission reimburses it according to the co-financing rate at priority access level or the co-financing rate for the relevant measure in a rural development programme. The bodies implementing the financial instruments must also make sure that the documentation, management and monitoring systems are operational. This will, among other things, involve putting systems and processes in place to provide all the data necessary for reporting in accordance with Article 46 of the Common Provisions Regulation and as set out in the funding agreement. Last but not least, the fund managers may need to further reinforce existing capabilities to implement the financial instrument. For instance, this may involve targeted training of staff or the development of promotional measures towards final recipients. Now the implementation on the ground can start. The financial intermediary will first select investments by final recipients who will benefit from support delivered through concrete financial products, such as a loan, guarantee or an equity investment. Here it will be important to assess the eligibility of the investments and contribution to the programme objectives, as well as their financial viability. Once the selection is made, a contract will be signed between the financial intermediary and the final recipient, and the agreed support to the final recipient will be paid. Please bear in mind that the second and subsequent applications for reimbursement can be submitted only once a predefined share of the first payment has reached the final recipients, such as small and medium-sized enterprises or project sponsors. The financial intermediary will report back regularly to the managing authority and measure the outputs and the results achieved. The monitoring and reporting processes take place at different levels. Between the financial intermediary and the final recipients, between the fund of funds and the financial intermediary, between the managing authority and the financial intermediary or the fund of funds, between the Monitoring Committee and the Managing Authority and the European Commission and the Managing Authority. The Managing Authority carries out management verifications during the setup and implementation phases. In addition, the Audit Authority could carry out an audit on the Managing Authority, the Fund of Funds or the Financial Intermediary. Once the resources used for investments are paid back, they may be reused for further investments. The resources that are paid back include capital repayments with gains or other earnings, such as interests, guarantee fees, dividends or any other income generated by investments in final recipients. This may be the case either within the eligibility period or beyond. The end of the life cycle of the European Structural and Investment Fund financial instrument will be reached when the managing authority exits all resources, including gains. This does not mean that the concerned fund is liquidated, as it may continue investing in national or private resources. For further information on how to implement financial instruments under European Structural and Investment Funds, 
please refer to the documents and videos available on the Phi Compass website, www.phi-compass.eu.